Hey gorgeous, welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, which features interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now without further ado, I'll hand you over to your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, episode 133. This is your host, Holly Wharton. I'm here with today's special guest, Lynn Horn, also known as the Joy Lady. Lynn is a woman who believes that joy is a choice, not an outcome. Her mission is to share what she knows about living a wildly joyful life with as many people as she can reach, so that they too can choose joy as a way of life and know that the feeling is within their reach and their control. Welcome, Lynn. Hey, Holly. How you doing? I'm so excited to talk with you today. Me too. Yay. So why don't you start out by telling us about your background and your business journey and how you got to where you are today with your business? Okay. Well, my my background, like, so I trained as a journalist, so that, that was kind of my, my early career. But I've always been super interested in self-development, so it's kind of like my, you know, doing my PhD on the side, you know, mm-hmm. um, as I was going along. And um, so I did, you know, lots of self-development stuff, but I was kind of always looking for that thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, you know, if I live a good life and, you know, I'm a good person, surely I should be feeling good on the inside, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I was just, you know, as I went through life, I was like, this is just not happening. You know, and I had the, the out, outer trappings, you know, I had a good career in journalism and, you know, I had good friends, I was living in a good place, you know, I had all of that stuff, but I didn't have that inner, you know, that inner glow. I wasn't mm. feeling the joy all the time. I was like, I don't understand, <laughs> you know, as I'm sure many people could relate to. And yeah. um, so I just... I went on this um, self-development. It was like a week-long retreat in the Blue Mountains in Sydney. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a you know, fantastic retreat and I, I got some great you know, insights and you know, peeled off a few layers while I was there, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but a couple of weeks later when I was sitting at my, my desk back at you know, my journalism work, I had this, like, this moment, it was like you know, kind of a little epiphany. I, was, I had this bubble of joy like well up inside me. Mm-hmm. And I'd not experienced that before. And I was like, wow, this is what, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is actually what I've been looking for, this feeling, you know. Mm. And because I hadn't had that before, I just kind of assumed it had come from the outside. So my mind was like, so what's caused that then? You know, I ran through, <laughs> I ran through the list. I was like, oh, did my boyfriend give me a nice hug? You know, did my boss give me a compliment? Uh, I kind of ran through the list and then it actually dawned on me. It was like, a, like you know, one of those ding, ding, ding moments. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, that literally didn't come from outside. It came from inside me somewhere. Mm. So that was kind of like my turning point moment where I was like, oh, my God, this is possible. And then, of course, my brain was straight on to, so how do I replicate that? (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, I didn't have the answers at the time. But I did know what was great about that moment was I did know it was absolutely possible. The joy was inside me. Mm-hmm. And though since then, you know, it's been my journey. So I, I trained as a coach 10 years ago. And so since then I've kind of like been on my own journey of finding the joy and then actually finding ways to share it with people. So that's kind of been the path and that's why now, you know, as the joy coach, so that's kind of my mission. So I've spent – so that was about a, almost a decade ago now when I had that little moment and ever since then I'm like, right – so I know this is possible. What are the tools? And I've been gathering them in my little um, my little sack and learning, you know, and then actually sharing them with my clients as I go. So mm. that's kind of yeah the background and kind of the, in a nutshell how I've how I've got to this point. Excellent. So why is joy so important to you? I so when I started coaching, you know, I was just kind of like a, um, just helping people in any way I could, but. I got interviewed for a magazine um, a, a little while, uh, a couple of years ago, and when I was when I was in that interview, it was almost like the questions that the um, the journalist was asking me. It was almost like I just you know an, another epiphany. It was like you really need to be sharing this with um, a wider audience. You know, you need to be kind of sharing with people what it is that you know, um, because you know, like I you mentioned in the introduction, I I know that joy is a choice you know we, we don't have to wait for it we don't have to like do things or earn it you know we can actually have it now but I just think that people actually don't know that no. um and you know if you if you read books about you know when people you know at the end of their lives the thing that they you know a lot of, a lot of the common themes is you know 
I wish I, I'd allowed myself to be happier. I wish I'd pursued my happiness, mm. you know, and, and what, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to like um, help people understand is that you can, you can do it right now. You know, it, it is something you can choose to do and follow in this moment. So, you know, and I think ultimately that's what we all want. You know, we want to be happy. We want to feel joy. Mm-hmm. So it's my mission to help as many people as possible do just that. Excellent. So you talk about how joy is a choice. And I totally understand that. I completely agree with it. I I get it. But it can be so hard to switch from, well, if I do this and this and this, then I'll be happy. How do you help people kind of make that switch to the the point where they really get it? You can just decide to be joyful. Yeah, good question. For me, the um, because they're kind of two different points of view. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about, you know, um, you know, I have to do this, this, and this, and then I'll get joy. Mm -hmm. You know, that is so that's kind of like a lot of assumptions there. That you know, joy is in the future. Mm -hmm. That it is something that will come from something else. Mm -hmm. Um, and also that there's something in between you and it. So what I try and help people do is actually shift their perception to realizing. So it's like I actually I run a course called Joy School and part of like we, we work on um, we call them the, the three joy junkie principles. <laughs> and um, one of them is um, claiming the truth that joy is your birthright mm. and that it exists within you. So, and I understand that for some people that's going to be hard to grasp initially. They might not believe it. It might not seem real and that's okay. But if you start making that assumption in every moment, then you can start to look for the joy. It's like the windows open in front of you and you start to spot and the things and actually um, bring in the feeling of joy within you. Mm-hmm. So it's about actually, you know, acknowledging that it is here now, joy is here now with me mm-hmm. and it's like playing a game. And it's like, okay, where is it then? Where is it? So right now I'm talking to Holly and that is cool because Holly is great. I love talking to Holly. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, and I get to like do an interview from my home and I'm not in my pajamas. But if I was, that would be fine. (laughs) So it's like, oh, and that's cool because my my work allows me to do that, you know. Mm. And I'll talk about this a little bit later in terms of the things you can start doing immediately, you know, to help you bring it in. Mm -hmm. But it is about shifting that that perception and that that inner assumption that actually – it's not out there. It's not something you have to do to earn. It's already here. Where do I find it? Hmm. Do you know what? I love that. I've you know recently been doing a lot of journaling and gratitude work and stuff. And a few years ago in my first business, I was at a point that was just really, really difficult. Actually, not just a point, but multiple years of really difficult years right. <laughs> where I was just really unhappy, no joy, not feeling it. Now I'm at the point where my life is so fantastic and I'm feeling joy. It's like in retrospect, I can go back and see now points that were joyful, even though I didn't really realize it at the time, you know? So I think rather than experiencing it 10 years later after the fact, I think that's really, really important what you say to look for it because you can experience it in the moment. Absolutely, yeah, and that's that's one of the the keys is actually being present. Yes, you know, so if we're too busy thinking about the next thing or you know what's down the future or maybe like what I have to do to you know get that, you know what, mm-hmm. um, you know, if we but if we actually you know translate into being present, there is so much here already for us to um, enjoy in our daily lives, and particularly as you know female entrepreneurs, like I mean, we are incredibly blessed to be able to run our own businesses. Yes. Um, and you know, there's so much here like for us to pick, you know, like, I mean, one of the things I suggest to people is just like, you could just stop like a few times a day and go, what is it about this moment? That's incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, it's like, you know, technology and like, I love my computer. That sounds really geeky, but I love my computer and what it allows me to do. Yes, Uh, me too. I love working from home. It's uh, such a gift that the sun's streaming in my windows. I can go downstairs and have a cup of coffee. Um, you know, it's all there's all this space. So, um, so that's a couple of you know ideas, you know, to to help people shift into the moment. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, before we move on and get to kind of the core of what we're going to talk about today, I want to ask you, what is joy to you? How do you define joy? For me, um, so uh, it's a good question. I get I get asked it quite a lot because it's such a um, you know 
intangible thing. Yeah. Um, so I kind of think about joy as a feeling. Mm-hmm. So I, I love the descriptions that uh, I'm not sure where I got it from now, but someone said happiness is a state of mind mm-hmm. and joy is the state of being. Ooh. Uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So happiness is kind of like a perspective, like an overall, you know, you take a step back, you look at your life and you're like, you know, wow, you know, this is great. I'm happy with this. Whereas joy as an, is an in the moment, mm-hmm. um, in the moment feeling. So joy is the feeling in your body. Like it's the thing that makes you, you know, when you're smiling, when you're hugging somebody, um, you know, when you're counting your blessings. So for me, joy is something that's in the moment and it's a cumulative experience. Mm. That's what I love about joy is the more you stop and appreciate, um, you know, what's in your life and the, the more you connect into that joy, it actually, I call it, um, it's like compound interest but compound joy. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. And, and it actually, that is the way it works. The more you tap into it, the stronger it becomes Ooh, I like and it that. starts to infuse your entire life. So for me, that's, that's, that's how I define it. It's that thing that I tap into in my body, the feeling that actually then if eventually does um, diffuse out into my entire life. It's mm. beautiful. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like an upward spiral of joy. You yeah, know, that's... In the same way that you can get that downward spiral of, oh, everything's horrible and depressing. and uh, It's just the opposite. You're kind of going up and it's getting more and more and better and... That's a great, a really good visual, actually. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Yeah, you start at the bottom. It's like, you know, little inputs, little inputs, but then the more you, you do it, the, the bigger and the greater it becomes. Perfect. Mm, love that. Great. So, Lynn, why don't you tell us how women entrepreneurs can dissolve overwhelm and put the joy back into their business? Because business can have so many ups and downs. Um, so it would be fantastic to learn how to kind of get on that spiral staircase to business joy. I love it. Yeah, the spiral staircase to joy. Oh, is that, Holly? <laughs> Take it all, use Thank it all. You. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> well, what I thought I might do is just kind of start with just by sharing why um, I kind of believe it's it's putting joy on hold is bad for business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, is that is that an okay place yeah, for me to start? Definitely, definitely. Great. Okay. So it's actually we touched on it earlier. It's that whole um, misconception that joy is a reward. Mm. Yeah, so that's kind of where we um, start at, you know, it's something, um, you know, we kind of think that joy is something that we have to earn, that we have to, you know, work hard. I'm, I'm using inverted commas at the moment not around work hard. <laughs> you know, we have to work hard so that we can earn it so then we can get the reward, you know, I'm sure. And that's and, I, and for me that's like a, a cultural thing, you know, that's, mm-hmm. you know, just so that anybody listening, like not to feel bad if that's the way you look at the world because that's the way we're all kind of, we're programmed mm. to, to think of the world that way. You know, but the but the the challenge with that particular way of looking at it is if you um if you keep you know working hard and working hard you know to get the reward which you know still doesn't feel like it's any closer um is that you can work yourself into the ground you know how many female entrepreneurs do you know that you know suffer from burnout yeah. you know and um so that's the thing because we're 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 thinking that working hard is the way to get the reward you know but what we're not doing is actually focusing on um bringing in the joy now and what happens with that is it actually is the opposite effect so if we're focusing on working hard to get to the joy we're actually neglecting bringing any joy right now mm-hmm. yeah. so you know the result of that is you get stressed you know you can feel overworked you know you can start to feel trapped or you know stuck in that like you know the hamster like on the wheel kind of thing mm-hmm. You know, and then we have the feelings of overwhelm, and this is I'm describing the downward spiral. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the feelings of you know, the overwhelm, the disillusionment. You know, sometimes you know frustration, and it can get into like you know, if it, it, the worst case scenario, it's like despair and anger and resentment, like, and that's mm-hmm. at the bottom of the spiral. Mm-hmm. You know, but as a as um you know female entrepreneurs, what that does though is it actually wipes out your cre- creativity. Yeah. You know, it puts your motivation in res- in reverse. You know, it declines your mood, you know, and which means that, you know, it severely impacts your output, your customer relations, you know, everything takes a hit. So it's no surprise when we don't focus on what, where the joy is right now, you know, we go into that downward spiral and that's why our productivity is affected and hence why I say, you know, it's bad for business to ignore it Mm -hmm. and we can't neglect the joy. Because, I mean, for me, you know, the thing is, 
joy in your business is directly related to your motivation to take action. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you're excited about something, isn't it? You know, then you're like, yeah, let's go and do it. You know, that's that excitement is what gives you the motivation. Mm. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I have to do that thing. Exactly. That's right. It's the struggle. It's the feeling like you're pushing everything uphill. Mm-hmm. But if you actually um, look for the joy and actually have things in your business that you enjoy, they give you motivation to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, I mean, where's the, if, if you're not actually, if you feel like a hamster in a wheel mm-hmm. and, um, you know, you're not actually enjoying your business, there's no motivation because you're like, oh, I'm just going to be this, it's going to be the same thing next week or next month or six months down the track, you know, and you don't actually want it. Your body's telling you that. So mm-hmm. there's no motivation. So then, you you know, you're not product productive, um, you, you know, you're not getting more clients and then, of course, you take a hit on your um, profit as well. Hmm. So, yes, that is the downward spiral and why you know, it is very bad to put joy on hold for your business. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to give some context for that one. So, does that, so does that, that answer that, that, the initial question? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so now I'd really love to share like my one question that I think, um, you know, if, um, entrepreneurs were to ask themselves, it would actually help them to dissolve the overwhelm and make better decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that question is, and I'm, this might sound simple, but I will explain. Okay. Um, so the question simply is, if you're faced with a decision, mm-hmm. does this add joy to me and my business? Yes. I love it. <laughs> it is simple. Do you know the, um, uh, there's Marie, a woman. Marie Kondo. Yes, yes. <laughs> the second you said that, I was like, oh, that reminds me of decluttering. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, I love that her. Question is so damn powerful. Oh my it god, is. I've decluttered so much this year, and it's so helpful in just deciding yes or no. Do I keep it? Do I toss it? It's so easy. I love it. <laughs> yes. So, um, do do you want to briefly share who she is? Oh, yes. She's uh, this Japanese decluttering woman who wrote the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up or something like that. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it was the book that everyone seemed to be reading last year. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. And that's the thing. It just brings it down to a very simple thing. So as because I kind of, if you're a female entrepreneur, you got into business and, and I know you particularly and also myself work with like heart-centered generally, you know, women in business. You know, we got into business because we wanted to create lives that um, supported and fulfilled like our passion, our, our, our lifestyle choices, you know, our desire to give to the world. You know, so if that's what we're doing, you know, that is a perfect way for us to make decisions, mm-hmm. you know, because ultimately we're trying to lead happy lives ourselves and also share that with the people that we work with and collaborate with Mm -hmm. so you know if you're if you as an entrepreneur are making decisions based on what brings you joy what lights you up Mm -hmm. then you know that kind of means that's also what you're giving out into the world yes yeah because if you're really struggling with your business and you're not enjoying it that reflects out into the world you're not going to be attracting any clients Precisely. Yeah, that that is the thing. So, I mean, I, I don't want to get too woo-woo on it or yeah. anything, you know, but because um, I kind of see, I think of joy as the way, right? Mm-hmm. And that might sound funny, but joy is a very high vibration emotion. Yeah. And so if you are choosing joy on a regular basis in your business, mm-hmm. you know, that will affect your business and your life because you are then operating in this at this higher vibration, which means you're attracting things also at a higher vibration which you know in my experience and my clients is you know wonderful clients more income opportunities um you know and also you get to just enjoy your business more Mm. so it is that one that's one simple question you know so and that's why for me it dissolves overwhelm Mm -hmm. because if you're trying to create that kind of business that we just talked about that's the way to do it you know if If you've got a decision between, you know, say someone comes to you and they want to collaborate, for instance, Mm -hmm. you know, does if you actually visualize the the possibility of it, does that, you know, just sitting in that visualization, for instance, actually make you feel expanded Mm. and lit up? In which case, for me, that's a that's a you know a big yes. Yeah. Or does it actually? And you can listen to your body. You know, does it because that's you know obviously joy resides in the body. so, or does it make you feel contracted? You know, does it make you want to clam up and go, oh, I'm not sure about that? 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty clear indication from your body, which you know I believe is one of our greatest you know untapped wisdom. Um, that's you know it makes it very simple. You don't need because that means you don't need to get overwhelmed by all of the possibilities because the one. The one, that, and that's why I say making the best decisions, because the best decision for you is the one that actually makes you feel expanded. Mm-hmm. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, it totally does. I mean, there have been so many times when I've been faced with an opportunity, and I've you know kind of tried to imagine it or think about what it would be like if I did that, and I get this just sinking feeling in my gut, like, oh, I do not want to do that. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So and that's also about trusting ourselves as well. I mean, that's a journey, you know, as I'm sure you know, and as I, as I know, you know, that is a journey. But you know, that's um, that's you know, part of it is just to learn to trust ourselves and our feelings that, that they are actually, you know, for our highest good. Mm-hmm. Yes, excellent. Um, okay. So, <laughs> um, would it be helpful now? I just might share a couple of pointers. Yes, about okay. how people can. Is that is that a good a good next step? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's go for it. So a couple of them we have actually touched on. Um, but my my top tip, if anybody takes nothing else away <laughs> from this call at all, is to start practicing gratitude. Yes. I cannot believe the change in my life since I started doing this mm-hmm. and since I started also sharing this um, with clients and friends. Uh, the, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. So the thing I actually forgot to mention in um, – when I was sharing about my early start was to actually say that I was not always joyful. (laughs) If you had asked, (laughs) no, seriously, if you had asked my friends when I was younger, if they said, you know, they were like, oh, we love Lynn, but mate, she is serious. (laughs) 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 Yes, I was always very like, you know, trying to map out all of the, the avenues and the outcomes. And so my brain was always on like, okay, so, oh, Oh, you know, just like kind of, I was always like in, in, um, firefighting mode, Oh, you know, it's always, yeah, yeah, very. Um, and it also makes you a very serious person because there's (laughs) no no room for fun, play and laughter in there. Not not when you're always analyzing and seeing how you can, yeah. Yes. Analyzing, looking for the danger, the potential fall, the fallouts, you know, the pitfalls, sorry. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I wasn't, so that's why I, I totally believe in the power of joy to transform, you know, people in their lives. But one of the greatest tools to that is gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, now, how do you practice gratitude? Because I know everyone's got their own little system. Yeah. So I do it two ways. Mm-hmm. Um, one, throughout my day, like for instance, if I'm having a cup of coffee and just standing by the window um, or like sitting at my desk and just, I need a you know brain break <laughs> from whatever it is I'm doing. I'll actually use those moments to just go, right, what in this moment am I incredibly grateful for? Mm-hmm. So I do those kind of a couple times a day mm-hmm. just in the moment so I don't have any any set time. I just like, oh, you know, just I just do it. It kind of lists things. Mm-hmm. And my other way I do it is at night time before I go to bed, I've got a little gratitude journal mm-hmm. and I list in there, you know, basically – until I, until I, my brain is is saying to me, okay, it's time for us to go to sleep, Lynn. <laughs> um, so until that point, I just kind of list as much as I can from the day and say, no, I am grateful for X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. So, and something that's, um, it, it's also a really good emergency, mm-hmm. um, what, a first aid, like emergency first aid. So if you're having a really bad day at work or something's happened, you know, you've had a you've had a bad discussion with a client, or something didn't go the way you wanted to. If you want to turn around that feeling, sit and 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 just write down all the things you're grateful for. It's it can it can turn it around in like a minute. Yeah, that that is very amazing. And I've I've also started using it as a tool to when I have to either be creative or start working on a project or something, and I'm feeling like my head's all over the place and I'm not focused. I will do my list of ten gratitude things. And then that just totally helps me kind of go within and connect with myself and just, you know, move on and do the stuff that I need to do. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's been amazing. Oh, that's a re- I hadn't thought about using it that way. Mm. Yeah, good. Oh, gosh, gosh, good learnings. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> thank welcome. you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, so that's, um, yeah, so gratitude for, you know, whatever it is your business allows you to do. Mm -hmm. Um, that, you know, perhaps you wouldn't be able to, you know, if you're working like a nine to five, you know, for instance, maybe you can pick up the kids, you know, you have the ability to have flexible hours so you can be home or you can cook dinner or you can meet friends, 
you know, as entrepreneurs, we get to choose who we work with. You know, we get to choose who we collaborate with. You know, we get to choose what hours we work. You know, it's, mm. it's, there's lots of, you know, incredible stuff. And you can dig, you know, there's so many layers. You could be, I'm, I'm happy, grateful for my computer, mm. you know, but I'm grateful for relationships. I'm grateful for the feelings I get. So there's, you know, lots of different avenues mm-hmm. that you can, and things that you can be grateful for. Mm-hmm. So that's my one, so that's one tip. Um, and the second one is, so this is a little playful one I love, um, is asking yourself the question, what can I add? Mm-hmm. So as a funny little example, I love stationery. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, I love stationery. <laughs> and you would just not believe the amount of pink I have on my desk right now. <laughs> and I've just been on Amazon a week ago and I have bought a matching pen and, like, desk pads and, like, post-it notes and they are beautiful. I am <laughs> And they make me happy. They make me really happy to Mm -hmm. see them. You know, just I look down, I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's something that I add to my environment that I look and it makes me, it gives me an instant little jolt of joy. I'm like, oh, pretty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if, in like I've got flowers, I often have flowers, you know, on my desk Mm -hmm. because flowers make me very happy. So it's about what little things can you add, for instance, like music. You know, sometimes I work to music because, gosh, it just fires me up. Like it Mm. makes me feel great and motivated. So it's what little things do you enjoy? So like can you – have you got an example, Holly? Yes, I do. It's different. Please go ahead. I do. (laughs) This year when I took the Christmas tree down – I took the fairy lights and I put them in my office. <laughs> oh, I love it. That is sensational. So all around and above my desk, I've got the fairy lights. And so, you know, in the evening when the sun starts to kind of go down, I'll turn that on and I've got beautiful lights all around my desk. And oh. So I love it. <laughs> uh, that's another idea I'm going to steal. Thank you very much, Holly. <laughs> You're sharing. <welcome. laughs> oh, you're welcome. My office is like a spa. I also got these, um, these you know, those LED candles that are like fake oh, candles yeah. and they change colors. I have those, just got those. They're, they're vanilla scented. Um, I got this water, fa- like one of those indoor water fountain things. It's oh, like a tabletop. Yes. I got one of those. I've got a diffuser for essential oils. My office is like a spa. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's so those perfect. are my little things. <laughs> I love your work. Well done you. Way to joyify your environment. I love it. Definitely. Um, Because and the other idea with this, so what in terms of like what you can add is like can you change your environment? So I I ran a workshop recently um, for female entrepreneurs and we were like brainstorming ideas for each, you know, how people could add more joy to their working day. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that everybody actually agreed on was sometimes if you work from home, you know, that can get a bit stale. Yeah. Um, but everyone loved the idea of changing up your environment. Like I work from a cafe a lot because it's a beautiful, like I've got one right near my house. It is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and doing that can actually really boost your, um, you know, boost your creativity and it's fun. You know, I love working from a cafe. Oh, this, this is one of the best tips ever. I, I have a couple of places nearby that I work from. And I also have started doing weekend workations where I go to a hotel. Like if I have a big project to work on, I'll book a hotel, check in on Saturday, check out on Sunday, and just hyper-focus on my project. Working from a hotel is amazing. (laughs) Oh, my God. I get so much done. (laughs) It's like I get get, the amount of work I get done in a day and a half, I couldn't get done in a week in my normal office environment. It's, it's amazing. Mm. So yeah, changing your, your environment is just so powerful. Yes. Gosh, that's good. I haven't, I have not tried a staycation. I might, oh, Holly, you just giving me ideas. Left <laughs> and center. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, and, um, and here's just a, another, a little idea that um, has helped me create a business that I really love. And it's about, um, having a look at how you can share what you love with your clients Mm -hmm. even if it's not work related Mm -hmm. because you know things like you know I I love a tv box set me Mm -hmm. and I love film I love words you know and so they're kind of the things that are part of who I am Mm -hmm. um that make me uh you know they they light me up you know they're just like oh yeah and I, I love talking about them um, so, you know, when you're, it's just, it's like the little things like, you know, also like stationary. So when I ran a workshop, I, I gave everybody, um, notebooks that were beautiful, oh. 
you know, and um, when I've written um, uh, email, um, you know, email series, mm-hmm. e- email series, <laughs> when I've written an email series, for instance, I've dropped in lots of comments about, you know, I've used themes from um, movies and I've talked about characters mm. um, from films that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. You know, because what that does is brings in and, oh, and I drop in like music that I'm listening to mm. while I'm creating the things. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and that's that's really fun. Um, so they're all things that reflect who I am. They make they light me up and then I'm also adding that value to my clients. Plus they're getting to know who I really am, yeah. which as we know as entrepreneurs, they want to feel that connection with us. They want to know who we are and what we're interested mm-hmm. in. You know, so it kind of also serves a dual purpose, but it's also just about like igniting your passions, even the little ones, and and sprinkling them throughout your business. Mm. Kind of, I think of it like making a swirl. You know, so you know, if 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 you've got like a, this massive circle, and the out, out of it, you know, on sorry, the outside circle mm. are all these things that you really enjoy, and you take a big spoon and you swirl them all into the middle, which is where you and your client sit. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so and it's just a really fun, you know, that's also more of a, a longer term thing. You can look at, you know, the services that you offer and how can you bring more of yourself and more of your passion in a way that also serves your client, um, so which is a really fun thing to do. So they would be my top three tips. That is excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hmm. So, Lynn, do you have any women business mentors or are there any women entrepreneurs who inspire you? Yes. Um, so I... Um, have worked with Catherine Watkin. Um, she owns a business called Selling from the Heart here in the UK, um, and she's been an incredible business mentor to me. I have learnt so much from her. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I just love it a bit. It's like just, and I'm still working with her. I just think she's amazing. Um, just her her knowledge of business is incredible. Yeah. You know, because um, I know you know Catherine, but yeah. she's, um, <clears throat> you know, she just I love her work. Yeah, she's great. Um, but, and from afar, I have, I have a secret entrepreneurial crush on, um, Denise Duffield Thomas, <laughs> um, who I know you also know, yes. <laughs> um, she's the, uh, lucky bitch, um, boot camp lady from Australia. Love her. Um, yeah, no, she's incredible. She just keeps it so real. Um, and she's so honest and she's just light and, you know, she's just upbeat as well, which mm. is, you know, something that definitely attracts me to her. Mm. Um, but she's just so real about how she made that journey from, you know, someone sitting in, again, not necessarily her pyjamas, but her, you know, her sweats, so to speak, yeah. you know, just with her own computer, you know, when she first did the first version of um, um, her, her Lucky Bitch Boot Camp to, you know, where she is now at a multi-million dollar business. And the journey along the way. So, no, I find her incredibly inspiring and I love her stuff. Love her. Yeah. Yay. So, Lynn, why don't you tell us how other women can work with you? Sure thing. Um, so, I run um, some workshops and they're called um, – the, the ones I'm running at the moment is called the Joy of Business Workshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure when you're putting this one out, but the next one is the 27th of February. Okay. But I'll be, running them, I'll be running it again this year as well. Right. Um, so, that's actually – to help women entrepreneurs to release the struggle and find their flow in business. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I do that and I also um, generally just work one-to-one with coaching clients mm-hmm. um, and then usually I have a three-month program and that's called the Joyful Entrepreneur. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Um, so they're the main two ways um, and I do have a, um, a freebie on my website um, that starts to give a couple of ideas, you know, how to – it's called the – the five secrets to living a wildly joyful life. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's lots of stuff in there that, you you know, you can apply it all to your business as well. Great. Yeah, so there's a few ways that people can work with me. Excellent. Oh, I also yes. forgot to mention I do VIP intensives as well. Ooh. Yeah, so if you just want like a quick hit of, you know, let's brainstorm together, mm-hmm. you know, let's come up with an action plan and you can go and implement some stuff straight away, that's the thing. Excellent. That, that's the best way to work. Great. So, yeah. Lynn, where can people find you online? My website is www.linhord.com. Great. I really should get the um, the Joy Lady. <laughs> I really, <laughs> just, just thought about that. It's, do you know it's what everybody remembers? So that when they meet me now, they're like, oh, you're the Joy Lady. I don't remember your name, but I remember you're the Joy Lady. It's quite funny. <laughs> yeah, so there and in terms of um, social media, I hang out most on Facebook. Okay. Um, I do have a Facebook page. I think it's Lynn Hoard Joy, okay. the business page, Lynn mm-hmm. Hoard Joy. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. 
My pleasure. That was really fun. Thanks so much for having me on, Holly. You're welcome. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit readytobloom.com forward slash 133 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Ready to Bloom podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's guests, including links for topics that were discussed at readytobloom.com. That's ready, the number two, bloom.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave us a quick review of this podcast. Thank you so much.